Today I'm going to be making something that I've been wanting for a while. There's going to be a single power supply for a bunch of external hard drives. This is going to be based off of this power supply. This is a Meanwell. I mean, well, power supplies are, in my opinion, the best. So you can see this is going to input 100 to 140 volts. So it'd be good for international or domestic. It outputs 40 amps at 12 volts. All the power supplies I'm using are going to be 12 volts. They each have those individual power supplies that each output 1.5 amps. I have 12 hard drives times 1.5 amps. That's about 18 amps in total. So this should be more than enough. We also see this as their slim line of enclosures. That isn't necessary for the build I'm doing. The main reason I wanted this one is because it's supposed to be very efficient. This is supposed to be up to 94% efficiency. So a very nice power supply. So the second reason I wanted it is I'm going to be using these switches. So I want to have the capacity to toggle each hard drive off individually. The main reason I want that is because I have some hard drives that are just kind of noisy. I want to be able to just shut those off and leave the other ones on. Now it's also worth keeping in mind this is probably not a great idea. The little power bricks are fairly resilient. They just work and plus when you start wiring things in by yourself there's always the potential that you could destroy something. There's another way to do this which you could just get one of those very long power strips. Ones that have the individual switches on them so you could actually turn each one off individually. I just want to completely eliminate that. I want to have one central location so that's going to be what I'm doing today. So this enclosure came with a couple of glands. I'm going to be using something a little different. So you can see these glands have five different openings. So that is going to allow me to put a bunch of these cables through it. But it's still going to seal, but more importantly, it's going to provide some strain relief. If I just try to stuff them all through this, I could potentially pull those wires in and out. I do have some mounting hardware, but I'm thinking I'm just going to screw this directly to the board. The main reason I wanted this is because I've got these drawer slides on it. So I can attach that to the wall and I could pull the thing out and push it back in so I get to the cables on the back. So these two wires coming directly out of the power supply and going to our fuse box, these are both 10 gauge. They need to be 10 gauge because they need to be able to handle at least 20 amps. And for the rest of this, I'm going to be using 16 gauge. So we got all of our negatives connected to these terminals. This is going to be our negative output to the drives. Now we got to do the positive and the positive can be easiest to do, I think, inside the enclosure. This is going to be our AC power in. It is fused and it has a switch, so I can just turn off the entire cabinet. Color codes on here is odd, so we got red is line, yellow is ground, and blue is neutral.
Okay, so now we got the positive running through the fuse block going to individual switches. So we can turn those on and off individually. Then we're going from the switches to the terminal block. Okay, so for these barrel connectors, the center pin is red and the outer barrel is white. For these hard drives, we want the center pin to be positive. So I was curious if we only put two cables in here, if that was actually going to be able to crimp onto it, and it looks like I can. So even if we leave three holes unplugged, all that's really going to do is it's going to allow air to come in and out. So it's no longer going to be watertight. Not really a big deal for this build. What it's going to do is it's going to be three extra slots. So if I want to, I can expand this in the future. I also intentionally staggered these down a little bit. So I got a spot up here for more switches in the event that I want to. I'm not going to have any more room for fuse blocks or for the terminal block. So I'd probably just do like an inline fuse or something there if I was going to do that. So this fuse block did come with an assortment of fuses. These are all too high capacity for what I'm gonna be using here. Ideally, you would want one and a half. I bet I don't think there's a size that is made. So I got a package of twos. Okay, and this is not super tight. I've seen some fuse blocks where you push these things in and you have to push so much force that you end up bending little tabs on the bottom. So this is much nicer. It's still tight. It's tight enough that it's not gonna start creating heat, but it's loose enough that we can actually push these guys in, which means we can also pull it out if we gotta replace it. This does have a cover that you can click on. Uh, in order to make that work, I would have to snap off this. And also to release it, I would have to be able to reach back here and grab these tabs. That's gonna make it more of a pain in the butt in the event that I actually have to replace a fuse, so I'm just gonna leave this off. So I have a 100 watt 8 ohm resistor right here and I've got that plugged directly into the power supply and that is just to provide a load on that power supply. So 12 volts, 8 ohms, that means we're going to have one and a half amps of load. One and a half times 12 is 18 watts, so the 100 watts of this resistor is going to be plenty enough to handle that load. So all the switches work, we do have 12 volts, we do not have any shorts. And the last thing is gonna be just to check each individual cable and make sure that they are producing 12 volts out of the center pin. Okay, so that does work. Okay, so I got six hard drives right there, plugged into that power strip there. That is plugged into this power strip, and I got these six blocks powering those six drives. That power strip is going to this power meter. So we got up to about 156 watts with everything turning on at the same time. I actually thought it was going to be higher. Now all these drives are currently spinning. It's trying to read. It's trying to figure out what's on there. And then they're eventually going to go to sleep and it's going to be pulling much less wattage than that. So now I'm just curious if the new setup is going to pull more or less watts. I expect it to be pretty close to the same. This is interesting too, so I'm actually only getting 11 drives here. So one of those drives is not working. So with them still plugged in, but all ejected, they're pulling 6.2 watts. That's interesting. So it looks like one of these was not the correct size. All the rest of them were good. Just this one. Huh. Okay. So kick that guy on. 1.9 watts. 1.6. Okay. I'm just going to kick these on one by one. So 
So the good news is the power supply will turn on with a low wattage. I wasn't sure if it was going to actually do that. So that's on. Okay, so it is idling slightly lower, so that's good. Just a couple of watts. So now I'm going to shut this off from the enclosure. So I found the hard drive that was not displaying properly is this little guy. So I plug that into my computer directly and it works again. Okay, so I'm going to reach back. I'm going to turn this on and that's going to turn on all 11 hard drives. So that way it's going to be reading the same amount as the previous test. Okay, so it was actually a little bit lower. Not a heck of a lot lower, but uh, what was that, like 13 watts? Something around there. So it does save a little bit of power. And the greater scheme of things is not going to be a huge difference, but it is a difference. 66 instead of 70, 63 instead of 65. So that one power supply does save a tiny bit of power compared to the power bricks. So having these things running all the time is really not great. I could just have those plugged into those power strips and just shut that thing off whenever I don't want them and turn them back on. But then of course I'm going to be powering on six hard drives with each power strip. I don't want to have to turn all of them on and all of them off all the time. So saving power is nice, but really the biggest thing is going to be just the load time. So anytime this computer has to boot up, it has to read all of these hard drives to find out what's on it before it decides to actually boot. So that can end up taking a long time. I'll show you what I mean. So right now I got all the hard drives off. So it was a little under 30 seconds and it was reading that one hard drive that was still on there while I'm waiting for this replacement cable. Now let's go ahead and turn them all on. There we go. Finally booted up. So that was excruciating for me. So that by itself, even if it wasn't saving me power, that slow boot up time is just a hassle. That is something I don't ever want to have to deal with. So now I can eject all of these. Shut them all off. So in that state, I'm going to have much faster booting times. I'm going to be saving a bunch of power because it's not going to be constantly drawing power for no reason. And then whenever I want to access one, I just reach over here, flip the switch. I don't have to stand up. I can easily get to any of these switches. And it could take a little bit to load. That is just the joy of having hard drive disks. And now we got access to that data. So yeah, I wouldn't change that for the world. Again, there are much easier options out there. This is just something that I've wanted for a while. And I'm very happy that I have it now.